Number 10, The Golden Compass. The 2007 adaptation of the first book in Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy was named The Northern Lights in some areas of the world and The Golden Compass in others. No matter which title the movie was released under in your country, it suffered from a different issue than most booked movie adaptations. Instead of changing the story too much or removing too many elements, the Golden Compass attempted to keep far too much plot to fit its short two-hour runtime. While this is admirable, it still doesn't make the movie any more enjoyable. The plot was just far too convoluted to enjoy without reading the books first. Furthermore, because of how everything was crammed in, it didn't carry the same emotion that made the books so successful. Some parts of the original story were critical of religion and carried a few anti-Catholic themes. But none of these made their way into the final cut. Due to this, fans of the original book series were upset as well, leaving neither group happy with the film. Despite all this, The Golden Compass wasn't a terrible movie, however it ended on a cliffhanger. And because it wasn't very popular, it's been around 10 years and we have yet to see its sequel, The Subtle Knife. Number 9. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy The original Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the first of five books, was written by Douglas Adams. It's basically a sci-fi comedy adventure based on what is essentially an encyclopedia and guide for universal hitchhikers. As famous as the books became, they didn't really translate well into movie form. They needed to come up with motivational backstories for the characters, which of course changed the characters themselves and the way they acted. Because of this focus on the main characters, many of the other characters were left on the back burner. And of course, being based on a large, complicated universe, many things were left out while some things were included to calm down the fans of the book series. Simply said, too much of the story and the world it was based in was dumbed down, making the film seem rather silly at times. Number 8. World War Z Max Brooks, the author of World War Z and Oral History of the Zombie War and the Zombie Survival Guide, denounced the 2013 movie adaptation of his book with the same title. He warned fans of the original that the only thing in common between his book and the movie was the title. This sounds like an exaggeration, but while the movie did sprinkle in some of the facts about the zombie war Brooks described, the two versions were entirely different with a completely different set of characters, story, and theme. Brooks wrote about how people would have to change their lifestyles and cultures to survive in this new world while the actual zombies were not nearly as important. Meanwhile, the movie focused on the zombies, how humanity would defeat them, fight back, and eventually rebuild. That's not to say it was a bad film, it actually scored 7 on IMDb. It's just that it wasn't true to the novel. Of course, a movie needs to be more plot driven than a book, but it can be easily argued that in the case of World War Z, the choice was simply made to call it an adaptation and give it the same name as the book to drum up more excitement from the fans of the novel. Not because they actually thought the book would make a good movie. Number 7. Aragon. Aragon is book one of Christopher Paolini's Inheritance Cycle Tetralogy, which is one of the greatest fantasy book series, on par with Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, but you probably wouldn't have known that had you just seen the movie. Christopher Paolini may have certainly been inspired by Lord of the Rings in other books or films, but when the movie was made, the studio sought to replicate what had made Lord of the Rings so popular, while stripping Aragon of what made it more individual. The writing was mediocre at best, and nobody but the main characters such such as Braum, Aragon, and Saphira had over 10 lines. While a movie adaptation does not need to include all of the details of the book, some that were completely necessary to the story were changed or left out. One such example is Arya being an elf, not a human. And unless you read the book, you would have no idea how Aragon actually learns to use magic in the first place. In short, they completely ruined the possibility for sequels because so many details crucial to the rest of the story were screwed up. Not that anyone really wanted to see a sequel to the movie because it had subpar ratings. Number 6. Gulliver's Travels While the 2010 movie adaptation of Gulliver's Travels is a fairly recent film, the original story was actually written in 1726 by Jonathan Swift, a writer famous for his ridiculous satire, who once sarcastically proposed in his modest proposal that the way to tackle England's population and hunger problems was to eat Catholic children. Of course, material like that can't make it into a Jack Black movie, but there are ways to keep the theme of the original intact, right? Uh, well, apparently not. In the original, Gulliver visits four strange islands, an island of tiny people, 
an island of giants, a floating island of highly intelligent people, and an island where horses are as intelligent as people. In the 2010 version, Gulliver, a depressed mailroom clerk, ends up on an island of tiny people. And really, that's the only element of the plot that's recognizable from the original story. Sadly, so few people knew of the original that when they hear the words Gulliver's Travels, they may think back to a movie where Jack Black was kidnapped and dressed as a baby. This isn't to say that you can't modify the plot of a book or change the characters a little, but when the original story is hundreds of years old, you should probably keep the story similar out of respect for the deceased writer. Number 5. How the Grinch Stole Christmas Sometimes childhood stories are just better left alone, and there is no better example than How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. The 1966 version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas did not make the worst animated movie, staying fairly close to its origins, but then in the year 2000, somebody had the bright idea to turn it into a live action movie. The character of the Grinch, which looked fine in the cartoon version, was what they modeled the Grinch on in the new movie. However, the result was basically a creepy green monster. To bring it to feature length, some things need to be added to the plot, and among those things was the Grinch's backstory. While in older versions it was simply stated that he hated Christmas, the new version needed a backstory as to why he did, to add more screen time to reach the feature length film mark. The end result was often, despite Jim Carrey's best efforts, described as a weird, dark, and simply not as fun as the original. And while an adult could see and appreciate Jim Carrey's exceptional acting, preteens probably never did. How the Grinch Stole Christmas is a children's story, partly because of its simple plot and message. And turning it into a feature-length film means that a lot of the simplicity that made the original so damn good was lost in production. Number 4. The Seeker The Seeker attempted to take the mythology and idea of Susan Cooper's The Dark is Rising book series and create its own story with a different plot, but still loosely based on the second book of the series. This may seem like a disaster waiting to happen, but films have been created with almost completely different plots to their original story, and found success, like the movie rendition of Cressida Cowell's How to Train Your Dragon. However, The Seeker was simply a terrible movie with poor writing and effects. The story takes place in a fantasy setting with practitioners of magic and a character who, similarly to Harry Potter, is the Chosen One, destined to defeat an evil character, who's portrayed by Christopher Ecclestone. But despite the presence of magic in the movie, the special effects were fairly lackluster, and even with the addition of several battle sequences not present in the books, it didn't seem as if these people were ever using their powers to fight one another. If anything, it felt as if they were simply using their powers to show off. And while the books were targeted at young people, the movie attempted to appeal to all audiences, and in the end, it didn't seem to appeal to anybody. The criticisms are endless, and the writer Susan Cooper herself claimed she wasn't happy with the final product. So it's not hard to imagine why it has a score of 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I know, they're pretty hard to impress on there, but still, 14%? Number 3, The Seventh Son. Sometimes, in order to turn a book into a movie, it's necessary to remove a few things and perhaps change the story slightly, which fans of the novel may get upset about. But it is acceptable if the movie is still really good and retains the same theme as the original. However, The Seventh Son, the adaptation of Joseph Delaney's The Last Apprentice, shares little of what makes the original what it is. The book is about Spook's new apprentice learning about the things that go bump in the night. He's not necessarily fighting or killing them, but imprisoning them and protecting the people. It's about a young Thomas Ward learning the ropes and making mistakes, but the movie adaptation featuring Ben Barnes, Julianne Moore, and Jeff Bridges, scoring a rating of 5.5 on IMDb, was about The Apprentice being trained to fight monsters for a few days and not about the complex world Delaney envisioned. The book series portrays a whole new world from the eyes of a young, timid, and naive apprentice. He's so naive, in fact, he's the one that's tricked into setting free the witch that causes all the commotion in the first place. Which would probably be a much more interesting story than having her escape years ago. Furthermore, had they stayed more true to the original story, they could have picked and chosen stories from the separate, but related book series to create multiple sequels. They went for something completely different from the original when they didn't really have to. Number 2. The Mortal Instruments City of Bones The adaptation of the first novel of Cassandra Clare's The Mortal Instruments was released in 2013, and is probably one of the worst booked movie adaptations in recent memory. 
Following the hype of The Hunger Games, Twilight, and other similar franchises, the City of Bones film stuffed in every single element of the fantasy genre you could think of until it was just an incomprehensible mess. It had everything from demons and warlocks to vampires and werewolves with nothing but CGI to back them up. The best that can be said about the film is that it achieved a decent balance between comedy and drama, and stayed true to the book more than some of the other contenders on this list. The general feedback was that the film simply took every single recent reference in pop culture, and then put them in a movie with little to no planning. Despite the fact that reviews were overwhelmingly negative, it did manage to entertain the younger female audience that goes crazy for any fantasy love story no matter how cringy or poorly planned they may be. The studio behind City of Bones did plan a sequel due to rising book sales, but it was pushed back. And back. And nearly four years later, the second movie hasn't been released. Number 1. The Cat in the Hat The Cat in the Hat film released in 2003 forces us to ask the question, how short can a story be before it is impossible to turn it into an acceptable movie? Well, the answer is definitely longer than The Cat in the Hat because the film was met with an overwhelmingly negative response. It was agreed that this cat falls flat by most critics, and the movie scored a 3.8 on IMDb and a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. The only thing this movie was good for was winning awards for being absolutely terrible, most notably winning a Golden Raspberry for worst excuse for an actual movie. One of the many bad reviews stated how the movie was simply filled with CGI and effects with no real story. As well, many felt the movie simply insulted Dr. Seuss's original story by adding things like potty humor and even jokes that some thought should have earned the movie a PG-13 rating. There are many things that can be said about this movie and how it strayed from its source material, but one of the simplest reasons for its failure was that there was not enough material to make a real movie out of it, and that it was only made to make money off of a classic child's tale. 